Hello, welcome back to Rotary Rockets. So today we have a, gee, what do we have today? Andy, what do we have today? <laughs> That's Sam. Today we are going Hello and welcome back to Rotary Rockets. Today we are gonna be experimenting with designing another PVC case motor. Now, when we started getting into amateur rocketry a couple years ago, one of the things I was trying to do was design motors that were made out of simple materials, cheap materials, and easy for just about anybody to build. And one of the key components to that was PVC casing, as well as uh, steel washers and rockite anchoring cement, all products that are inexpensive and easy to get a hold of. We had a couple of Pretty good designs. Probably our most successful PVC motor was the Kiwi. We launched a couple of two inch diameter rockets with that. They went fine. It was a very small, um, not very powerful motor, but it was effective. But we wanted to go a little bit bigger with our rockets. And when we got into the four inch diameter rockets, like our Eliminator series, we needed something a little bit more powerful to launch those up. So we started experimenting with expanding that motor size up, but we had a lot of problems. We had casing explosions, we had nozzles ejecting, we had gas blowing around the nozzle. Eventually, we just really gave up on the PVC design and we switched to what we use now is our Robo Monkey motor, which is an all metal casing. It's a combination of aluminum and steel. We've launched it many times. It's proven itself to be a really effective and dependable motor for our four inch rockets. But I've always had the idea that it would be nice to be able to have a PVC case motor that just about anybody could build and still launch a four inch diameter rocket. So uh, we've got some components here. We've got a couple of ideas on some nozzles. Uh, and we're going to do some testing today. Now, in this video, we're not actually going to show the in-depth details of everything we're doing, all the parts that we're using, everything we're using to construct it. This is really more of just a proof of concept. If we can get a motor that is successful and powerful enough to launch our four-inch rockets, then our next video will be a 100% start to finish. What you need to purchase, how you need to build it, and the fuel to put inside of it. But for right now, we're going to start out with doing some nozzle tests and determine what the best nozzle size is. And then we have two nozzle designs. Once we know what size nozzle we need to use, we'll test those two nozzle designs to see if one is a little bit more efficient than the other. But both of these are going to be made from very simple, easy to get components and very inexpensive components. So let's take a look at what we've got just to start off with. Our motor casing is gonna be an inch and a quarter PVC, six and a half inches long. That's also gonna be where the fuel is housed. So we're gonna have six and a half inches of fuel. The top of that simply gets capped with a PVC cap. On the bottom here, we have a fitting. Now this is a gray PVC fitting, which here in the United States, that's actually an electrical conduit fitting, whereas this is plumbing conduit. And that's actually really important to the design of this particular motor. And we'll go into that a little bit later, probably in the other video when we actually show how to construct this. And then we've got a retaining ring that's gonna go in there and that's gonna hold in our nozzle. And we have two types of nozzles that we're gonna try. One is just a simple washer style nozzle and we'll be using a bolt uh, where the orifice will actually be drilled through that bolt. That's gonna allow us to change the orifice diameter very easily by just simply changing out that bolt. And then after we get uh, a final thrust test on that simple washer nozzle design, we're also going to then add a small divergent, which is made out of this uh, steel plumbing fitting. And that's simply going to sit on the nozzle like that so that we get a divergent. And we'll see if that offers any more thrust than just the simple washer design. So let's get building. Okay, so it's been a couple of days and we've done two ground tests on this motor and nozzle design. Unfortunately, neither of them went very well. So here's the footage from the first one. Uh, we had a major blow-by issue where the gases got around the nozzle washer and escaped through the threads of the fitting. And then eventually the nozzle just popped out. Now you see here, this is uh, 
the final product, about half of that aluminum retaining ring is just completely gone. It didn't blow out, it actually got disintegrated. So um, we learned some lessons on that. We went on to number two. This one didn't go very well either. Here's the footage for that. Uh, basically, uh, the gas has got around the washer again. We sealed up the threads. We got the washer as tight as we could. We felt that that was uh, really good, but it still managed to get around it. And then the gas has got into an area of the fitting where it wasn't supposed to be, heated that up, pressurized it, and exploded the fitting. Now it is um, important to note that we actually didn't explode the casing. We only exploded the fitting that was housing the nozzle. So this was a nozzle failure, not a casing failure. Now one of the major things that I was trying to do with this particular project was to make a nozzle that was 100% reusable and could be built by just about anybody with ordinary products without any specialized tools. I'm trying not to do any machining any welding and it seems just with the design that we've got and the products that we're using it's just too many opportunities for failure so we're going to change tracks a little bit and design this a little bit differently we're going to make a nozzle that is partially reusable so this is what we've built we've got the same similar fitting than what we were using here but instead of using the gray PVC fitting for electrical conduit, we've switched back to the white PVC fitting, which is for plumbing. We have the same aluminum retaining ring down in the bottom. We've got a washer up inside there that the retaining ring is pushing against. That has a hole in it that's 2064, so again, that's uh, number 20 nozzle. These two tests here were also with the number 20 nozzle. That's what we're starting out with, so we can decide whether we need to go down in size or up in size. And then in the top here, we've poured in some rockite anchoring cement. It's basically there to do two things. One, it's going to keep the massive amount of heat that comes out here from just flooding all over that washer and superheating that washer. The second thing it's going to do is it's sealing the area around the edge of the washer and around the PVC as well. So it's protecting the PVC, it's protecting that washer, and hopefully we won't get any blow by around that washer as well. So we're going to build a fuel cell for this and head out and test this nozzle. So test number three went very similar to test number two. We exploded that fitting here that's housing the nozzle. Now, it's unfortunate, uh, not unfortunate that it exploded, but unfortunate that it was just the fitting that exploded, um, because that really didn't teach us anything more than the first one did. It would be better if the PVC exploded, then we know that we're reaching the limits of the PVC capability, and that's kind of where we want to get to. So uh, we searched around, we found some of the bits of this, not very much, but we really didn't learn anything. We could have either um, overpressurized it so that the fitting was overpressurized and simply exploded. Could have also been a heat issue where the fitting right around where the washer was still got overheated for some reason. The heat would have weakened the plastic and then it would have simply exploded. Um, so, unfortunately, that didn't teach us too much. Now, we've gone in this video from trying to build a nozzle that's 100% reusable to this one where the nozzle was about half reusable. And we're going to switch to a nozzle that's not reusable so that we can continue our testing to find the proper nozzle size. Now we may go back to one of these reusable designs once we verify the proper nozzle size, but we just haven't gotten to that point. So this one is a completely different design. And like I said, it's not reusable. This is a one-time nozzle. We've got a cap and a slip coupler with a short piece of PVC in the middle. Uh, there's a washer in there again with a number 20 or 2064 hole down in the center. Above that is some rockite anchoring cement and inside the cap here below that washer is also rockite anchoring cement. 
So this should be significantly stronger than just using that threaded fitting. The fuel cell, we're going to have six and a half inches of fuel sitting on the top of this. We'll go ahead and test this and see how that performs. Um, if this does explode, then that simply means we've always been over pressurizing the whole time. And we'll just simply change the nozzle size. If the casing explodes, same thing. It means we're just reaching too high of a pressure. And again, we need to change the nozzle size. So I'm really hoping this is going to tell us a lot of information about what we need for a proper nozzle, whether we can go down or whether we can move up. All right, so it's been about another week. We've done some more testing. Now, before I show the tests on these nozzles, I just want to give credit for this nozzle design. This idea of holding in a masonry style nozzle with an end cap is something that I saw a couple years ago on Richard Naka's website. Now, I know some of you know that name. If you don't know who Richard Naka is, he's pretty much a genius as far as model rocketry and amateur rocketry builds are concerned. Um, this is something I saw on his website years ago. We had some other plans and some other ideas, so we never went down this idea of using the end cap as the retainer. But in our testing that we've done in this last week, it does seem to be a really good design. It holds up very well, really helps to reinforce the end portion of that PVC. So I do like that design. So this test here was done with the number 22 nozzle. This test here was done with a number 20 nozzle, and I know it looks a little higher than the other one. They both had six and a half inches of fuel. This one just had an older nozzle design. I improved the design when we did this one so that it was a lot shorter. And then finally, this is what you get with the number 18 nozzle. So clearly we are not gonna go that route. Seems that the number 20 was the best performing. So we'll show you those videos real quick here. We believe our scale was damaged from the explosion of test number three. And the scale seems to be about 10% off. So even though we read 152 pounds, we probably actually only got about 135 pounds of force, which is still really impressive for something this small. Uh, with the number 20 nozzle, here's the test for that. And the scale read 168 pounds of force. Again, being about 10% off, we probably got about 150 pounds of force. Still very impressive. Now, there was a weird thing as far as the startup. Um, on the number 20 nozzle, it basically went to 20 pounds of thrust almost immediately, sat there for a little while, and then zoomed right up to full thrust. On the 22 nozzle, it had a much harder time building up pressure, obviously because the nozzle size was bigger. Um, it basically went up to 5 and then 10 and then 15 really slowly and then eventually took off and got up to its highest pressure. I have some serious concerns about that actually lifting the rocket off of the rod because it just doesn't build up enough thrust really fast to lift the rocket up. Even with this one with the 20 pounds that it builds up, I'm still a little bit concerned but it's better. Now we could increase that initial thrust by making a larger core size. We have a 3 8 core in here. We could go to a half inch core, but I'm not exactly sure that we need to do that quite yet. So our next step, even though we were planning on progressing a little bit further here in this video, we're going to stop this video here and we are going to go ahead and make a new rocket for this. We have the design already done. It's a little bit smaller than our Eliminator style. It's a cute little four inch rocket. We're going to go ahead and build that and actually do a flight test with this number 20 nozzle with this design. We're actually going to use this shorter design because it's a better, easier design to do. And we'll be back real soon with that video. So I hope you like what we're doing with the background. We're trying to change it up a little bit, make the videos a little bit uh, funner to watch. 
We've also got a new camera, so our video quality should be improved as well over what you've been seeing. So we're really excited about that. And uh, if you like what we're doing, there's a like button, there's a subscribe button. We really appreciate it if you click those. If you like what we're doing, get some notifications because we will be back real soon with another video. And we'll show that rocket launch. And if everything goes good, we'll be showing how to build this motor. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.